What's up YouTube? It's Taylor. Uh, I got some more videos with Rover here. Um, finally got Rover V2 fully functional with the new gearboxes. So Rover V2, the first time I built it, had the same gear ratio as the as Rover V1. It was a 4.3 to 1 gear reduction. Um, but the tires on Rover V2 here are twice the diameter of the tires on V1, so of course the same gear ratio wasn't enough. Um, so instead of having a single stage 4.3 to 1 uh, gear reduction in the first gearboxes that I put on Rover V2, um, I moved to a two stage uh, 11 to 1 gear reduction, um, which is finally up and running. And I've got some video clips to show you. We're going to cut to those um, uh, of Rover driving around some stairs, so stick with it. Um, yeah, let me, uh, I'll, I'll get in here and I'm going to give you a little bird's eye view of Rover and then we'll cut to the videos and at the end I'll give you a little more detailed view of what's right here. All right, yeah, so this is Rover um, and uh, you've seen Rover V1 uh, in the previous videos, but this is the, this is the new big one. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of clips first. Um, in the first clip, Rover uh, goes down some stairs uh, and then it tries to go back up. So let's, uh, let's watch what happens. Alrighty, uh, just doing a little demo of Rover V2. I got the gearboxes up and running, and I got some LEDs in there. So the question is, how is Rover going to do on these stairs, huh? Is that these stairs? How are you feeling, Rover? Are you up for it? Rover is super up for it. Okay, you ready? Okay, well, definitely can go down the stairs, but can Rover go back up the stairs? That's the real question. Let's find out. Oh. Okay, it's looking so good. Looking good so far. Turns out the stairs are not a problem for Rover. Okay, so um, obviously no problem with the stairs. Uh, those stairs were a little small though, so let's see what happens when we get, uh, get into a bigger step. Okay, so admittedly these stairs are a little small. It's not that surprising that Rover can go up them. But the third one here is larger. So let's see how Rover does on a larger stair. Can it do it? Oh, it's a little... Okay, it looks like there's a height at which it's able to climb, push the front wheels up. This is also a little bit of a reverse slope. Yeah. Well, there are limits to technology, my friends, but on the small steps, Rover doesn't mind. I love those frogs. Um, so the bigger step was a challenge. We were rubbing uh, right on the inside here. So you could change the ride height of Rover with longer springs. That would help with that situation. Um, and the inverted, it was uh, just ever so slightly inverted on the stair. If it was uh, any kind of a real angle, it might have been a different story. Um, and then I'll show the, uh, the articulation of the suspension. So you can see the suspension articulates nicely. Um, and in the stairs, I went mostly straight at them, but actually uh, it can go at, at uh, sort of any arbitrary angle up the stairs. It didn't seem to have a problem. So I show that with this curb. All right, this is a perfect example of a situation where the articulated suspension is really helpful. So if you see here, Rover can keep all of its wheels on the ground while going over rough terrain. Um, yeah, so those were the action clips, and then uh, I'll give, uh, give a more detailed tour over now. Alright, so um, this is Rover V2. Um, 
You can see next to Skittles over here, this is an elongated Skittles. This is the new one I'm building um, after having given the last one away. And this is Rover V2. So Rover V2 has big honking tires. These are the Demolisher from RC Four Wheel Drive and they're marketed as the world's largest RC car tires. Um, I've got some new stickers made for Reboot, so make love, not war. Um, I say that because I think that if you make open source robots that feed people, then that's an act of love um, that you do through engineering. Um, and I'd much rather we do that than spend our money on war. But it's also dual purpose because really that sticker has so many meanings and I just haven't seen those things in a while and I wanted to make some more where I put the reboot text small. Um, so I just wanted to make stickers that say make love not war. These are the batteries. This is the Turnigy Multistar 6S 22.2 volt 10,000 milliamp hour 10 amp hour pack and I have two of them wired together. I made a little harness for that. Uh, this is the compute. It's just a Raspberry Pi 3. It's not the new 3 Plus. Um, and then this is an RGBW LED strip. You can see the um, you can see the white element in there. So these have they're not just the normal WS2812B, the NeoPixel. These are SK something. They're supported by the NeoPixel Python libraries. Um, so it's the same NeoPixel Python libraries that we'd use, but it has a white element in it as well. Um, so those are going to be Rover's headlights and taillights. Um, and I do have all the code now to drive those arbitrarily from Python, so I'm, I've got them hooked up to remote control input right now. Um, and um, yeah, so that's the, that's the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've got the VESC motor controllers dangling out here, and um, let me see if I can get a better view. Yeah, so here's the encoder. Um, so flutter, love everyone. Um, you can see that my slogans are associated with love. I just want good messages out there in the world. So I put that on all my products instead of marketing. It is marketing, but it's just something I want to see out there. Um, and then you can see the motor behind the encoder. So this is the magnetic encoder board. These are open source, uh, designing KiCad. You can also buy some off the shelf boards to use with these motors, but these have the right plug for the VESC. Um, so you've seen the venerable VESC before. Um, this happens to be a US made one. Um, you can get a lot also from Maytech from eBay for hundred bucks. So these are a hundred dollar controller. They have a CAN bus. So this is how I'm doing the communications through this CAN bus. And then they got some big honking capacitors there. Um, nice big FETs going to big cables. Um, and then the encoder plugs in here. Um, and then Rover V2 has these delicious big springs. Um, these are, these are really nice. Um, and, and they help Rover go over, over things. And I, I'm holding the phone in a light so I could only very awkwardly actually actuate those right now. Um, and then these are the big tires. And as I mentioned, there's a gearbox on the inside. There's, I have some other videos of the gearboxes. So that is Rover V2. Yeah, and, and, and look at Rover. Rover's really cool looking. I just, um, I really like this robot. This is, um, this is really cool. Yeah. Um, oh, I wanted to say one thing, which is why am I making robots? And I have a, a longer video, actually, a 45-minute talk I gave um, when I was at that university in Mauritius, um, which is called Why I Make Robots. Um, where I really go into it. But what I want to do is I want to make robots. Um, well, no, I got I to say it the other way. I want every person on earth to have access to free food. And I know that that's possible. And it's been possible for a long time, but I think there are ways now with our productivity going through the roof, which is what automation is going to do, um, to make it a once and for all thing, to do it. To make every person on earth have access to free food. And it's going to take a fundamentally different approach to solving problems. It has to be an open source project. Um, 
was the only way that that could happen. Um, and it's going to need a lot of people, a lot of people to contribute. Um, and what I want to do is I want to inspire people. I want to say, yeah, one guy working six months made this. That's me. Um, I made Rover. I started with Rover V1 around October, and it's end of June now. Um, so seven, eight, nine months. This is where you can do. This is where you can get in nine months. And um, you'll see the. You saw the videos. This is a capable machine, and it still has faults. Um, I I look at this work, kind of. Um, the way the Linux kernel was in 1991 and 92, it didn't do a whole lot. Um, but some people thought it was a good idea. And now Linux runs everything. There's going to be a lot of companies out there who want their robots to cost money to people. But if it's in principle possible to do it cheaply, we would be robbing ourselves if that's not how we did it. We can solve productivity problems with machines that are cheap. You can buy a $1,000 3D printer and build this robot right here. And it's still a prototype. And we're going to see how long these gearboxes last. I think they're going to last a little longer than the last ones, but I think they'll need another rev before they last a long time. But before long, this thing will be driving 10, 20 kilometers between services. And then you can really worry about what software you're going to put on it. And Part of the reason I'm building this is so that we can write that software. And um, if we can make machines that make food, and we can make them cheap, and we can make them open, and we can make it so that people all over the world are able to build them, then we can make a change. And it's not going to solve every problem. We will have so many problems. In fact, it's going to solve very few problems. But it's going to make certain things a lot better. And what I'd like to see in my lifetime is the machinery that makes food be so cheap and so abundant and so accessible that people the world over are happy to pay for it and make sure that its output gets to everybody else, everybody who needs it. And that starts when you make love for people. Hey, thank you for listening. If you want more information on Rover, please visit reboot.love. Uh, I've got uh, links to the Onshape files where you can fork Rover and look at the design files and 3D print them yourself. Uh, links to the GitHub page where there's uh, the Python code that I used here. Um, there's a lot of information on the hackaday.io page, um, including a bill of materials for what you need to order if you wanted to build your own Rover. Um, and uh, if you want to create an account on reboot.love and ask questions there, um, then we can all build a knowledge base of, of how to build your own rover or uh, talk about why we might do so. So uh, please check out reboot.love. Thanks.